Hey VC, Jeff here. I figured I'd do another installment of my CD collection videos while I get everything set up here. Now I know if you've been paying attention, if you watched the last one, I know that I said that was the end of the A's. I have rethought my process. I had originally left out some specific genres, um, but I decided I'm going to bring those in and keep them together. So this will be the final one for the A's. And then the next going forward, I will be uh, combining everything together. So, anyway, um, yeah, it's let's jump right into it. Again, A's. So we start off with AD. Now I know people are gonna say, "Oh, that's a Carrie Livgren solo album." Yeah, it is. Carrie Livgren, Seeds of Change. If you're not familiar with Carrie Livgren, he's the longtime Kansas guitar player that left the band back in the what eighty whatever back and he did ad so this was his first solo album this is a great album you've got guest vocals on here from ronnie james dio which is a big draw back in the day he was you know still an up-and-comer as far as you know vocals anyway we get then the second album they did was called ad carrie livgren ad so you can see the name starting to come about and then we get into flat out ad and we get some glare there anyway art of the state so this is pretty much, you know, the 80 version. This is, you know, this this is one I showed not too long ago that I picked up on vinyl for a second time. Reconstructions reconstructed. So they kind of went back in and tinkered with the Reconstructions album and re-released it, remixed, remastered, re-edited, -re whatever. Reconstructions reconstructed. Prime Mover 2, because this was Prime Mover 1. Again, they kind of went in and redid it, and uh, you know, so you got the original and that. And as you can see here, this says Carrie Livgren, and this says Carrie Livgren AD. So, you know, the names to me are synonymous, they, they go back and forth, depends on what you want to do. AD Live, recorded live March and June 1985 at the Orpheus Theater, Minneapolis, and at the Boathouse, Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia, the Boathouse seen quite a few bands there they don't exist anymore the boathouse went out of business a while back but anyway that's a local venue to me here um definitely solo album uh and then there are two versions I'm, I'm trying to remember get this name right collector's sedition collector's sedition and then the collector's sedition there's two different versions again he has a he goes in and redoes things and then reissues them, so you end up with like two of everything. When Things Get Electric, an instrumental album, great stuff. Again, uh, one of several, what is it, one of several, one of several possible musics. One of his first instrumental albums, great album. And there is another one, I think, which is this album that again has been tweaked with some additional tracks. But I, I've got it on my wish list, but I haven't picked it up yet. Anyway, so that's it for the Carrie Livgren AD section. I lump them all under AD. Moving in, we got Amaziah. I'm not sure Amaziah, how you pronounce that exactly. 1979 hard rock album that was recently reissued in what, like 2011 or so. And it's got some bonus demo tracks on here. So classic rock type stuff. Great stuff. All right. And then we got some Angelica. This is the latest album by Angelica. It is an instrumental album. So it's a guitar instrumental type, semi-shredder, melodic, very good stuff. Dennis Cameron is a guitar player, and Angelica is the band. Um, this was the last album they did back in the 90s, and then there was long decades of silence, and then this one came out. So anyway, and on this one, Dennis kind of started singing himself with the vocalist. So there's a little mixture there, whereas previous albums uh, he was just more or less playing guitar all of these have been recently reissued so they're nice and cleaned up and remastered and reissued walking in faith great just melodic hard rock back in the day we would have called this melodic metal um, anyway just great stuff this is the first one I've talked about this one quite a bit on Vineland CD and the fact that Rob Rock was brought in to sing vocals on this this was one of the early Rob Rock albums I mean you know he had done impilitary and stuff but this was one of his earlier works where he came in and basically was a vocalist for hire because the singer couldn't record. There's a whole story behind that, but he sang on this album, great stuff. One of my first introductions really to Rob Rock. And then this was recently issued. This is some demos. They put this out. So again, all of these have been 
reissued recently so readily available to a degree and this one I mentioned not too long ago because I recently got the second one Argyle Park misguided is the first Argyle Park this is uh, a three CD set they reissued the album with all kind two CDs worth of bonus tracks this is uh, Clayton Scott Albert whatever uh, from circle of dust and a friend and they did this and uh, great stuff industrial uh, industrial metallic uh, type material and then the second which is one I showed recently is AP2 Argyle Park 2 it's the friend without uh, Clayton and you know so it's a couple friends that did this similar stuff very similar all right now this, let me see, this is Armada Frontline, great hard rock, bluesy hard rock, just, you know, great hard rock. This was recently reissued, and I love this album. There's a couple more of theirs that I'd love to see. Uh, I believe this will be eventually pressed to vinyl. So the band many years ago, one of the guys in the band, uh, most of these were released back in the day on... Well, I think there was one on vinyl. Most of them were cassette releases uh, back in the 80s and, you know, very early 90s, I guess. Actually, 70s, 80s or whatever. Um, but the the band had bounced them over digitally, and one of the guys in the band had sent me... Uh, they're kind of, you know, they're photocopied, but they're, and they're CDRs, but they are copies of the, all of the other Armada albums. So, live albums, things along that line. I think this is the one I maybe that was on vinyl. One of their early albums was Artifacts. It's kind of like extra tracks. This is the band before they changed the name to Armada or some of the guys at least Eternity better late than ever. All right. Arneon, I guess I forget what country this band is from, but pretty much uh just hard-edged metal um uh, what's a good way to describe it not quite so harsh that you would be considered extreme but maybe heavier than typical uh, great stuff i love this album i love the that that style that was they were hanging on there there armageddon usa this actually is uh well the guys are all over now but this is recorded not too far from where i live i'm friends with a bunch of these guys I mean they're not like a local band they're further up towards the DC area but um, way back in the day when this uh, before this album had come out this is a reissue of their album and all their demos but back when the demos were out back in 87 ish I met the guitar player at a at the Cornerstone Festival in Illinois and hung out with him all weekend for the most part and have been kind of friends since Facebook friends um, and so anyway, and the, the singers down in Florida and stuff, but they did this album and then silenced for a couple decades and then came back, I don't know, somewhere in the past 10 years and did that album. So just American metal, just straightforward. The vocalist has a very, uh, he's not a real melodic singer, you know, kind of, you know, a Dio-esque type, powerful singer, great stuff. Asian Mortality, Asian Mortality, um, kind of a doomish, not really, kind of a gothish, sort of kind of dark along that line. Um, yeah, it's the only thing I've got by them, and I don't know a lot about their history. I just know that there's some connection here with some other bands that I like, and this was a great album, so I picked this up. Atomic Opera, one of my favorite bands that, okay, well, let, let's start with the first Atomic Opera. That's their most recent. We go back to this uh, for Mad Men only. All right, this album was released, um, what was this, 90, early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, early 90s. Um, they had a video on MTV for the song, well, they might have had a couple because they had a video for Joyride, but I think the one that I remember seeing on MTV back in the day was justice great song just straightforward hard rock and met metallic edged um produced by sam taylor these guys are from texas they have a connection for the most part with the sound and producing and all of that 
of bands like King's X and Galactic Cowboys. So to me, these were like the trifecta of that. The Atomic Opera was the part of that whole genre. They sound great. They look, you know, they, they were like that similar style, but not really. Anyway, they went on after this to do the uh, Penguin Dust, which is another great album, but wasn't on the same major label and or budget that the other the this is kind of like a bunch of uh self-released music for the most part i'm not sure if it's be considered an actual album it's kind of like uh you know extras and then this is uh gospel cola and this was their later album great stuff so one of my favorite bands but they haven't done anything in quite a few years uh, frank hart the singer whatever he's been doing a lot of other music and other styles and stuff i've got some of his material which i will cover at a later time but would love to see some atomic opera come back into force all right audio vision <sighs> swedish band i believe overseas band i i, I kind of am forgetting exactly um rival records they're going to be related to uh kind of a power metal feel type style it's a one and done i just don't recall all the details um but you know and and the singer uh christian Livergren, Lilligren, narnia i mean he's in all kinds of bands and this is something he was involved with sang with and did did a one album for he did a lot of side projects back in the day and that was one of them just great power metalist with very melodic vocals i love his vocal style and then the awful truth which i have mentioned before because i have that on vinyl and this is again a texas band the two of these guys went on to form galactic cowboys again it's going to be in that it's a trio it's going to be in that like power vein of uh just uh if you're into galactic cowboys into king's x very much similar to that type of stuff again this is that same the galactic cowboys king's x sound to me you know has a distinctive sound and that's what this reminds me of like it's two of the guys went on to do the uh, galactic cowboys but to me this sounds a lot like that it's just just one of my favorite albums on metal blade records so i just it'd be nice if they you know reissued it but i had to track down a copy of it on vinyl from overseas it's just you know anyway if you haven't heard this check it out i mean it's it's 1990 it's 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 old but it's great stuff great stuff anyway that's it so i am done with the a's i mean there i probably could dig deeper and find pop stuff somewhere in a closet or somewhere that might be in the a's but we're going to be done with that we're not going back to that that's it for this a's are done we'll move into the b's and i'll make sure next time that i don't uh, separate the genre type stuff thanks for watching though i will be back rock on and rock hard